In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we worship you today, Father. Lord, there is no one like you, O oh God. There is no one like you in all of the earth. And in your own way, why don't you just begin to worship the King of Kings right now? The King that is worthy of all the praise and all the honor. The King that is worthy of all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I think it's appropriate that we do that right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, there is no one like you. There is no one with your name, O oh God. There is no name that is greater. There is no name that is higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Come on, that's it. Why don't we just begin to worship him right now? Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we submit our will to you today. We allow you to have your way in this service, O Lord. Your complete, O Lord, will to be done, O Lord, in this service today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray your will to be done, O Lord. That your whole will would be done, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. The presence of the Lord is in this place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I korobose, I karabose kataye, I loboroko se kataye, la moho se kaye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I kalaboroko se katalaboroko se, I labose kataraboko robo se kataye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we only want what your will is for today. We want your whole will, O oh Lord, and nothing but your will, O oh God. Not what we want, O oh Lord, not our desires, O oh Lord, but whatever you have in store. Can you just begin to express that to God right now? Lord, it's not about what I want today. It's about what your will is. It's about what your plan is. Uh, Come on, I wonder if we could just flow into that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I submit my will to you, O Lord, this morning. I submit what I want, O Lord, to happen to you, O God. It's not about what I want, O Lord. It's about what your kingdom, O Lord, has in store. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, there's beauty and power and surrender. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, we can only do what God wants us to do when we give up what we want to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, we, I want to be in your will, Father. I want to be in your whole will, O oh Lord. I want your will and nothing but your will, O oh Lord. Not just today, but for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving right now. Why don't we just begin to flow with Him in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, don't be afraid to exercise it. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, come on, the Lord is in this place right now. Let's just let him have his way. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we lift you up in the name of Jesus. Thine kingdom come, Father. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We activate that Holy Ghost authority, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, you have his spirit. You have his authority. Why don't we just begin to exercise it right now in the name of Jesus? Come on, that's it in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. He's wanting to have his way. He was wanting to have his way. Why don't we just begin to surrender to the authority that we feel in the name of Jesus Christ? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, not our will, Father, your will be done. Not our will today, O oh Lord, your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you want to speak, O oh Lord, this morning, whatever you want to release, O oh God, whatever you want to impart, you can have your way. Why don't you just begin to speak that to God, express that to Him. Lord, you can have your way. Whatever you want to do in my life, oh God, I give you full permission to do whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do in my life, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's continue in that vein. Let's just continue in that vein right now. If you have the Holy Ghost, why don't you just begin to let Him flow through you? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, you can have your way today. Whatever you want to speak, O Lord, this morning. Come on, I feel if you if you have the Holy Ghost, if you could just speak with the with the other tongues right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. God's doing something. Something in this place right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 If you're sensitive to the Holy Ghost, you know that there is a depth that has not been tapped into yet, but is about to be tapped into. Um, I feel led to just share a story, and we'll see where the Lord leads this. Um, for those of you that are new here, welcome. we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We, we love you. 
Uh, but the Lord has something very powerful in store for today. If anyone believes that, just begin to say amen. Um, it was, I believe, two nights ago. Um, many of you know, Pastor is on a mission trip to the Philippines. And he's been sharing with my family and some of you of the different kinds of miracles that have been happening. It's beautiful. It's powerful. There's people with diabetes being healed. There's people with blindness being healed. It's, it's, it's the Lord. It's, it's not man's doing. It is, it is God. And it has been a beautiful thing to see. And the Lord has been dealing with me about this. And it's almost like he's saying, it's easy for some people to believe that can happen overseas. But there's almost a, a degree of faith that's a level higher that believes for it in the United States, that it can happen here. And I was, I was praying to God, and I was, I was just hungry, just hungry after him. I wasn't praying for a blessing. I wasn't praying for a need. I was, just, I was just praying because I wanted him. I said, God, I see what you're doing in the Philippines. I see what you're doing in, a, in, in other parts of the globe. And I said, God, I believe that you can do that here. I believe you're not just able to show yourself powerful in a third world country. I believe you can show yourself powerful in the United States of America. Because our God doesn't need to be limited by when we, when we choose not to believe him to do certain things. And so I, I, I immediately just began to pray. And I don't mean this. You can take this however you want. I'm just going to say it how the Lord dealt with me. I was up in the morning till about 2.30 in the morning. Because the spirit of prayer and that spirit of hunger would not leave. Because I believe God is going to do something here. I believe God has a plan for this, for this nation and for this state. And there was a spirit of hunger. And the Lord said, there is such a hunger that I have imparted, not just to you, but to many people. That you can go on this whole night and you won't stop praying. But it's almost like the Lord stopped me and said, I want you to continue that hunger Sunday morning and just begin to hunger after me and just begin to thirst after my spirit. And if you're plugged in, you can, you can almost feel like a wave of the Holy Ghost. Just, it's about to come and it's about to just wash over us. And I wonder if but before we sing songs, this is, this is very important for us to get because this will affect the whole trajectory of the service. I wonder if, if, if you're just hungry for God, if, if you just want him, if you're hungry for God, you'll, you'll begin to step out of your comfort zone. You'll begin to step out of the normal. It's what happened in the book of Acts. But if, you're just, if you just have a, a sincere and pure heart that says, God, I'm hungry for you, whatever you want in my life, I, I wonder if, if that's you, if you could just stand and if just... You could just begin to lift up your hands. It's not about me. It's not about the, the name of this church. It's about your hunger between you and Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If we could just begin to lift up our hands. And if with those hands lifted, if we could also lift up our voice. Can you just begin to hunger after God this morning? God, my, my soul thirsteth for thee, O oh God, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Come on, I believe the Holy Ghost is wanting to accomplish something right now. I wonder if we could just begin to close our eyes, forget about everything else, forget about what's going to happen throughout this service, forget about the program, and can we just begin to hunger after God? Can we just have a Selah in the, in the spirit right now and say, God, I want whatever you have for me. Come on, that seat. I wonder if you could just begin to lift up your voice and let the Holy Ghost flow. Come on, 
Come on, that's it in the name of Jesus. If you have the Holy Ghost, begin to let it flow. In the name of Jesus, just let the Spirit flow. Just let your hunger begin to let you go into deep places with God right now. Come on, my hunger isn't just limited to a 10-minute prayer. My hunger reaches more than that. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. God's doing something right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, why don't we forget about the program? Forget about the program. And just focus on the God. Focus on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is in this place. Focus on the God of miracles. Focus on the first and the last. He who was and is to come. Why can't we just focus on that right now? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on why don't we just begin to focus on the God that was from the Old Testament but is now here in the name of Jesus that is in the midst that is not just around us but is within us in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Would you just begin to clap your hands to the Lord right now? Hallelujah. And would you just begin to put a voice to that praise? Come on, there's something stirring in this place. Why don't we just begin to keep that going? Why don't you just begin to worship the Lord right now? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is no one like you, Father. Ya la borrocose cata la borrocose. He cata la borrocose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He carabosa taya rabasa. He carabosa taye. Come on, you can still feel it. There's still a hunger within your spirit that says, God, I'm not quite satisfied yet. I'm not quite done yet. God, I, I just want a little bit more. In the name of Jesus. God, Jacob's well won't satisfy me enough I need the real living water Jacob's well only satisfies the physical thirst but Lord your spirit that well will satisfy the spiritual thirst oh God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that's it just let your hunger flow just let your hunger flow let your hunger begin to lead you into deeper places come on I feel it in this atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I wonder if we could just begin to lift up our voice one more time in the name of Jesus Christ Lord your will be done in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah The Lord, the Lord wants us to know one thing this morning, and I know a lot of things are going to be spoken. I know a lot of things are going to be said. I just hear the Lord saying, every great move of God begins with great hunger. The Lord is not going to try to give you something you're not interested in. He is looking for that one hungry person that even may be from the 99. He's looking for that one. He's not really interested in just a crowd. He's looking for the one. Because the Lord spoke very specific things to his disciples that he did not speak to the crowd. 
So before we, we sing this song, I, I, I want you just to begin to say, Lord, I want to be that one. I just want to seek after you. I'm not seeking after a blessing. I'm just seeking after the King of Kings. Lord, it's my alabaster box, oh God. I pour it at your feet, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I wonder if all over this place we could just begin to lift up our hands right now in surrender. God, I just want to be in love with you. I just want to know you, oh God. I just want to be in your courts and walk in your presence daily. God, I don't, want, I don't care what the cost is. I just want to be with Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, worship with us.
there is no one else like you you were faithful
every hand lifted high, can we just magnify the name of Jesus? Can we just magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, we're not here to fill up time. We have time for this. If you have a need in the house, He is in the room. He is in the room. He is in the room. Just magnify the name of Jesus and allow Him to seep and break and to mold whatever need you have this morning in the name of Jesus. Whatever stronghold that needs to come down, it can come down this morning. Whatever He needs to mold this morning within you can be done this morning. Why don't you reach across and grab the person next to you in Jesus' name? And why don't we bind together in prayer? Why don't we bind together in prayer in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. If there is a need in the house, there is someone that believes. There is someone that believes praying with you. Come on, come on, in the name of Jesus, take dominion and authority, take dominion and authority. If you have a word, if you have a word, let a move of the Holy Ghost have its way right now. We don't have to wait till the end of the service. God's willing to do it now. God's willing to do it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I bind every stronghold. I bind the chains. I command them to loose your people in the name of Jesus. 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 He kava yurubu sata. He lolobu kuriye debere debashaye. I don't believe God's done yet. I don't believe God's done yet. If you have a need in the house, would you come to the front? I don't care if it's a financial need. I don't care if it's a physical need. A mental need. And we come to the front in Jesus' name. I believe God has a word this morning. And God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. God wants to express His love more than you know. God is love. And God wants to impart a word, but He's got to take care of a couple things first for you to receive it. In Jesus' name. For those of you who believe, the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will speak with new tongues. If you believe, if you believe, and for those of you who don't need prayer necessarily this morning, if you feel led to pray for one of these people here, if you have a word over them, or if you have the faith this morning, why don't you lay hands on them? For those of you in the front right now, can you just lift up your hands? Can you just lift up your hands? 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bind every stronghold in the mind. In the name of Jesus, and I loosen your faith. I loosen your peace, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Sata, Lido Bosataye, Linda Mataye, Bosataye, weariness of the body. I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Ludo basata, lindo borriende berisi. I loosen clarity upon your body. Kida baria de beria lo basata ye. Any sickness within the body, any pain within the knees, in Jesus' name. Sata yo rumbo kut sata ye. Ilo rumbo sata. Likunda la baria da la baria da la buku. Ikaida Maria da Maria da Baka, ilo Maria da Maria da le Maria da le. Kai saborosa, indo boroka basai. I come against every family curse, and I loosen your blood in Jesus' name. Ikai uru satai. Can we give Him all the glory? Can we give Him all the glory in Jesus' name? He died in a Maria de Beria de Beria de la Berreki. He died in a Robo Sai. He died in a Satai. Come on, God's not done. God's not done in the name of Jesus. Lika Sutu. Lida Maria de Berreki Tabasha. He Lobo Satai. For those of you who have received something from God, or those of you around, can you worship as if it was your miracle, as if it was your healing? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice when one finds the penny. We rejoice in the blessings. Shatai ida buria dala bakaye, ida ida ber yele boruboko. Shabakaye yere bosata ilalo bosata ikiro bosha ile le le bere le 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 bosaye. Come on, God's doing something. God's doing something. God's doing something in the name of Jesus. Re de 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 rubu suturiya darabaka lido bu kuriya darabaka yero dolo bosa. Come on, the Holy Ghost is ministering. The Holy Ghost is ministering. He la Maria de Bosa. He la Bokuria de Berde de Bosha. He lulubu sataye. Hey, can we just direct this praise to the Lord? Can we direct this praise to the Lord? It is not by man's wisdom nor man's power. It's all because of Him. It's all because of Him in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and just say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You made it to the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Why don't you turn to your other neighbor and tell them how good looking they are or how beautiful they are this morning. <laughs> Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Well, it looks like you guys remembered to change your time. Amen. <laughs> Barely. But you made it. You made it. Sometimes we have a rough week. Sometimes we go through some struggles through the week. 
but I made up my mind. If I can just come to the house of the Lord. If I could just make it. If I can just, even if I have to drag my feet. Even if I have to crawl in spiritually. I know sometimes the enemy can have his way in our lives and we let him. But if I could just make it to the house of the Lord. Church, we have liberty here. We have liberty here. If you don't know the person next to you, introduce yourself to them. Because sometimes we can't wait. We can't wait to make it to the house of the Lord. If you are living by faith from Sunday to Sunday, or if you're living from Sunday to Wednesday and Wednesday to Sunday, it's going to be a struggle. But when there is unity in the body, when there is prayer in the body, we can make it together. We can make it together from faith to faith. When we allow the move of God to flow through us, in Jesus' name, it is a powerful thing when God flows. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So on behalf of Pastor and behalf of Spirit and Truth Lighthouse, we want to welcome you. Um, We have received, just like how the man of God spoke this morning, we have received wonderful news from the Philippines of people getting healed from diabetes, glaucoma, people being filled with the Holy Ghost. That is something to rejoice for, church. That is something to rejoice for. And I know it's all from God, but sincerely, we want to thank you for the financial blessings that you have blessed this church to allow your pastor to minister to all these people. It is worth every penny for one soul to come to repentance. It is worth every penny. That Bible says that If you gain the whole world but lose your soul, what would you profit? But if you take it on the flip side, it would take the whole world to buy one soul. It would take the whole world to buy one soul. Everything within it, every financial, physical, everything. And that's how much God loves his people. So we do want to thank you. But can we thank God for all these miracles. And all these blessings. Because we are one body. There is one church. So their victory is our victory. Can we just rejoice right now. As if they were here in this building. For those who have received their miracle. For those who have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. For those who have been baptized in Jesus name. Can we rejoice for the kingdom. For the kingdom is at hand in Jesus name. In Jesus name. So again, we want to welcome you in the house of the Lord. Why don't you shake your neighbor's hand one more time? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. I am happy that we have a good crowd, amen, with a time change. (laughs) And um, God is already starting to do great things, amen. Uh, You may all be seated, and I just want to take the time to greet our wonderful guests here. Um, Welcome back, Audrey, Miko, and Nina. Amen. Over there. (laughs) You didn't know we've been praying for you, right? (laughs) And we also want to welcome Brother Jimmy's good brother, Okay, Paul, and it's Joni, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he, he's one of our great deacons here in the church. Brother Jimmy, we love him. 
and and thank you for living that life, that example. Amen. And it's a blessing. Just want to thank you for that. Amen. <laughs> sure. We all agree. <laughs> months we continue to pray it took months <laughs> amen it's a wonderful teamwork here in the body of Christ amen In Jesus name thank you father thank you Lord for your goodness and um Thank you for sharing that, and we're so happy of what God has done, amen, um, and he's doing, he's going to continue to do great things, amen, and I want to welcome our Maureen, right, Joe, all right, welcome into the house of God, and uh, I heard the good news today, amen, today, my dear brother Paul, He's going to obey the word of God that you just preached on the day of Pentecost and about the preaching of Acts 2.38. And praise God. And our wonderful brother is going to receive that covering over him of the blood of Jesus. And we're so excited for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I just want to give God another praise. Thank you, Jesus. Because the Lord has been putting in my heart and some of you a burden for precious Marines. And you've heard the voice of God. You've heard it. And I just thank you for obeying that voice. And I promise you'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. In Jesus' name. All right. And um, thank you, Pastor David, um, for going with the flow of the Spirit. Feels good today. Amen. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And for the worship team, thank you so much for being sensitive to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Um, and thank you, church, for all your prayers. You heard the wonderful miracles, right? Glaucoma, blindness was healed, right? Diabetes, heart problems. I, I believe they have a video of, of, of that um, that he, he didn't give to me, but um, maybe we could share it when he comes back. But I also have a video, but um, give me a few. And I thank the AV team. Let's give them a hand as well. <laughs> All right. You guys are awesome. Amen. And I just want to give a quick report. And I'm so glad that I was able to chat with a pastor. Amen. Did a FaceTime, right? Um, but um, for the Filipinos, so that you know, okay, the first weekend of crusade was in Laguna, Cavite, and Antipolo. Amen. Uh, those provinces um, in the Philippines. And on the first night and second and third night, God did great things. Total of 91 receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then a total of 76 recorded healings 
miraculous healings. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it will continue on one more weekend. One more weekend, okay? And it's going to be in Zambales, Bataan, and Pampanga. Okay? And um, I'm, it's just so exciting to see what God is doing. Amen? Through our pastor and through the other pastors with him, Brother Rodriguez and Brother Manchak, and keep them in prayer. And I thank the prayer team we had on Wednesday. Wasn't that powerful? We interceded and we warred in the spirit against the hindrances for the SoCal Revival team in Philippines. And you know what Pastor said on the first night? He said, I can't believe it. There was no resistance. No resistance. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. And God is building a stronger, stronger prayer team, okay? So you you keep on training, praying, interceding, because God is doing his work in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, just wanted to share that with you. And Brother Al and Sister Terry, if you can play that just one video, just wanted to share with you so you can see how powerful what God is doing there in the Philippines in their crusade. Thank you, Jesus. So powerful. That's so powerful, and it's a beautiful experience, amen? If you have not yet received the Holy Ghost, it is for you. The promise is for you. And if it's been a while since you spoke in tongues, guess what? Liberty of the Spirit here. Liberty of the Spirit. And um, we will pray with you, and we're going to believe with you in Jesus' name, amen? God is going to do great things. And I just wanted to give a few announcements that um, we will continue this Wednesday. And I believe we might do another prayer training. And we're just going to go with a flow of what God wants us to do. Amen. And we will also have our Connect Group meetings. We will have the Mission Viejo Connect Group on Thursday and the Aliso Viejo Connect Group on Friday. Amen. And... Um, also wanted to remind you that we will have the SoCal Ladies Conference that's out of town on March 23rd to the 25th. And I put a little poster in the greeters, if, you, if it's easy for you to take a picture on that, that has all the other details, but it's all on the website as well. Amen. Um, last day to register for the three-day discount is today. Okay, ladies, if you have any questions, let me know. I know I'm, I'm going, and, and um, Sister Villarin and Sister Villarin are going as well. So, and baby Villarin's going too with us, <laughs> aside from my daughter too. So, I, we got our room reserved, okay? And I know a few of you already said that you're coming, but let, let, let me know if you have any questions. It's going to be a great time. Fellowship with about a thousand ladies, amen? <laughs> that love God as well, in Jesus' name. And then at the end of the month, the 30th, the 31st, and April 1st, we will have what we call our PAUSE conference. It's going to be in Escondido, and you have also, there's also a um, flyer in, in the lobby that you can take a picture of if you need to get more details on that. That's for everyone, okay? Everyone that is hungry, for the word 
of God. That's our bishop, Bishop Wright, who will be teaching. I promise you, you will be fed. <laughs> you will be fed in Jesus' name. If you're hungry, come. If it, can, if it can't go all of the nights, that's fine. We've reserved a hotel for that. We're going to stay the whole time. We don't want to miss anything. But if you're able to come a day or, or a, a day and night, okay, I'll warn you, the sessions are not short. <laughs> but you will be glad. You will be glad to hear from the Lord. Amen. Of, of, wow. There's a lot in the Word of God. Amen. How many of you love the Word of God? There's so much to learn in Jesus' name. And um, it's good to see my, my, dear, my dear sister, Sister Jocelyn. You know that we love you. You're a part of this family. Amen. And God's hand is upon you. Don't forget that. We are with you. Anything that you need from us, please let us know. We care a whole lot about you. And we're covering you in prayer. Right now, let's just say, say that prayer of covering over our dear sister right now. Lord, we pray, oh God, your covering of grace, oh God. Your covering of strength, oh God. Even, Lord, your comfort and your healing, oh God. We pray, oh God, you carry her through this time, Lord. And you give her a reason, oh God, to give you the praise, oh God. For you are, Lord, oh God. You are, oh God, faithful, oh God. You are loving, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, oh God. For your hand, for your hand upon my sister in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And I'm going to ask Brother Paul to come to um, kindly take the tithe and the offering, please. Praise the Lord, church. Can we stand? Can we all stand this morning? You know, I feel, I feel the spirit in this place right now. Can we just plug in a little longer here? Let's just flow with the spirit right now. Speak in that heavenly language. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak in that heavenly language. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go ahead, bask in his peace, for he is the Prince of Peace. Oh, we give you glory, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord God. Oh, this morning, our Lord, he wants to talk to you about submission. Specifically, the power of submission. The power of submission that only comes from our heart. Somebody receive that. Somebody receive that right now. Put it in your heart. Hide it in your heart. Hang on to it. Open your heart to receive the ministry. Can you put up the passage? Scripture, my sister. Today's passage comes from... Let me get my glasses. I am old. Today's passage comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. And I am going to read the uh, NLT version. It's a little easier to understand as English. So it says, the human heart is most deceitful of all things. Deceitful of all things. He's talking about our heart. Of all things. Not just few things, not number two or number three. Of all things, he says. And desperately wicked. I looked at the word desperately yesterday. And uh, it is described as, let me get to it here. Desperately, in the dictionary, says hopeless. Lost beyond hope of recovery. Irrecover irrecoverable. That's what he says. That means, what he means is that basically even if you want it, your heart will not let you. That's how strong 
the iniquity of a heart is. Who really knows how bad it is? He, you know, we don't even know how bad it is. Only God knows how bad it is. And he's, he's telling us our flesh state of our heart. Can we go to 10? But I, the Lord, search all heart, hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Now, this is telling me that although on previous verse he said of everything, he's deceitful of everything wicked. But he's saying that basically not because, you know, you would think that we would have no chance, right? There's no hope there. But God knows we have hope. God has hope in us. He says, he says he will search every heart and examine their secret motives and give their people their due reward. Which means he knows that we could do it. He has hope in us that we will do it. That's what he's telling us right now. Now, the, what he's talking about is basically the power of iniquity that's in your heart. If left alone, the Bible says, if it's left alone and if it's not led by the Spirit. Now, what do you mean by led by the Spirit, Brother Paul? I realize that led by the Spirit is having a life of prayer. That's all that is, okay? So if we use the word led by the Spirit, that means you got to have the life of prayer. Which means if you do not have life of prayer, you are not led by the Spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Wait, that's what he just told me to say. So if you are not led by the Spirit, then you do not have life of prayer. And that's just coming from the Lord just now. I didn't even write that down here. Now, if left alone, he says, if it's not Spirit-led, then it will not surrender. That's what the scripture is saying. It will not surrender. It will not do what you want it to do. And that is, and that is to, uh, and he does not want to give up what he wants to. And that is treasure closest to him. To it, his heart. What is the treasure that's closest to his heart? Money. It's not going to give it up. That's what he's saying. Now God told me that God, the heart is a gateway. It's a gateway to either submission or self-righteousness. And there is two options, two ways for this gate, gateway. First, if it's led by the spirit of the flesh, your power only, then that would definitely always lead to self-righteousness. You will always fail. But the second option is that if it's spirit-led, which is his power, his glory. And how do you get his power? Through spirit led. How do you get to spirit led? Through life or prayer. So if it is spirit led and if it's through his power, it always leads to submission. In fact, he told me that the depth of your submission is going to be determined by the depth of your daily prayer life. So if you pray, if you don't pray, then you don't, you're not led by the Spirit. I'm sorry to tell you that. If you're not praying, you're not led by the Spirit. So deeper you go into the prayer life, deeper you seek the Lord, the deeper your submission will be. Receive that, church. Receive that. That is so important. Now, he's telling me every day that all my power, all my blessing will not flow. We will not flow through you if you're not flowing through your submission. In Jesus' name. I think we need to pray right now. Can we close our eyes? Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you for the meat. I thank you for the meat of your word, Lord God. Lord, I need help, Lord God. I can't do this on my own, Lord God. My power will not do it, Lord God. I will fall short, Lord God. I will be, Lord God, following my flesh, Lord God, if it's my power, Lord God. I need your power, Lord. I need your grace upon this place, Lord God. Lord, I need your grace released upon this atmosphere, Lord God. Fill every vessel under my voice with your grace, Lord God. Your empowerment, Lord God. Ye katama shoko lomo, shikata my shoko lomo. 
So he begs to ask you, am I the number one in, my, in your life? He's begging to ask you, am I the number one in your life? For you cannot serve me and be enslaved to your money. The money that is a treasure that is closest to your heart. You cannot be enslaved to your money. That's going to prevent you. That's not going to, that's not, that's going to prevent you being submissive to your tithe and offering. Because tithe and offering is really the money, right, folks? So you know what? If you are enslaved to your money, you cannot do it. I believe this morning he wants to test our hearts. So can we raise our hands right now? I encourage you to join me this morning. Oh, let's exercise our submission to our Lord through our tithe and offering this morning. Lord God, as we offer you, Lord God, we give it on to you, Lord God. Lord, your, oh, your 10%, Lord God, the treasure, Lord God, the earthly treasure that is close to my hand, close to my heart, Lord God. I submit it. I surrender to you right now, Jesus. Lord, let it be said, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, through my tithe and offering, Lord God, you are, you are number one in my life. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. As you bring up your tithe and offering, shake somebody's hand and tell them how much you love them. And for you electronic givers, there's Brother Jim in the back right over there. Okay, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. such a love in this atmosphere. Can you express that to someone right now? Can you express that love? Allow God's love to flow through you right now in Jesus' name. The love of God is here. The love of God is here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. And as we turn to hear a word from God, in order to hear a word from God, we ourselves need to prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts to receive, prepare our, the love of God to flow through us. Uh, in order to flow in us, you got to allow it to flow through you. And when God flows through you, you will understand a deeper meaning of His love. True love is not self-focused. True love is towards others. When you start thinking of others above yourself, it's no longer about you. So right now, can we just bind together one more time in prayer? Just stay seated wherever you're at. Just reach out to the person next to you. And let's begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the person that is next to us. We pray for your love to have its way in us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord. Prepare my heart. Prepare the soil for every word that you want to be spoken this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tear down everything within us, O oh Lord, that hinders in the name of Jesus. And let us say amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor David, for your ministry. Amen. And as I've been praying for God's leading on a message, and 
You guys know I usually do this Wednesdays, <laughs> not Sundays. So usually I'm a long-winded teacher, but I promise you today it's different. <laughs> amen. And plus, I want to see my dear brother get baptized soon in Jesus' name. Amen. But I, I want to just share something really quick um, that God first gave me a message. Amen. I said, wow, this is going to be fun, right? It's a favorite subject I had. And then he changed it on Saturday. <laughs> and I said, God, are you sure? <laughs> I wanted the prettier one. <laughs> but, you know, we got to follow the will of God, amen? And I, I thank Brother Paul and Pastor David, for confirming his word. What you have said confirmed, amen, that that's the message for today. And I believe your hearts are ready. If it's for one person, I'll be happy. But if it's going to bless you all, I've been even happier. So in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your openness to hear the word of God. And I'm going to start with Mark 12, 29 to 31. And Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is here is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Do you realize what I just read? How important those verses are. Those two are the greatest commandments. Because it just said there, there is none other commandment greater than these. You know, I got to know this, amen? I got to study to do these commands, amen? And so that's the first set of verses the Lord gave me. And I said, okay, Lord, this is a good topic, <laughs> We need to know. And if you already know, we need to review. Amen? Because the walk of God is a continual walk. Amen? You start the right pathway and you don't stop. You continue on. Amen? And I believe it's the will of God for us to grow. To grow. And earlier, Brother Dylan leading the prayer, he said, if you're hungry... He's going to feed you. We better stay hungry, amen, <laughs> because there's so much in the word of God to learn. And I, I just thank God that he gives us that revelation, amen. And so as I share the word, I just want you to be sensitive to God's conviction, to God's gentle conviction to God's dealing with your soul, amen? And the title that I felt was proper was, do you really love God? Do you really love God? Because I do want to learn how to really love God the biblical way, what's in the word of God. What is love? What is love? It is not an emotion or a feeling. Okay? 
<laughs> when you say, I'm in love, okay? Love is not an emotion or feeling. Hey, you can have a good feeling when you have a healthy relationship, right, with someone you love. Yeah, you can have that, but that's the result of it. The emotion is a result. But what is love? As, as we read the scriptures, and the bottom line of that is love is not an emotion, but it is a choice of our will. The choice of our will, okay? How many of you believe that you love God? All right, okay, good. All right. Will we believe that, Pastor David? Will we will believe believe that that they all love God? Well, you know what I think is a is a good gauge to find out is to see how much they love the word of God. Why? Because God is his word, right? Um John 1 verse 1 says, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, you know the Bible. That's good. You're ready. <laughs> You're ready. Um, so we got to love this word because why? The word is his mind. Amen? This is his mind. So we got to love. God, I want to know what's in your mind. I want to know how you think. I want to know your righteousness. I want to know what you think is right and wrong. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with the flow on this. It, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm going to just ask questions. I guess this is a probing sermon, right? Um, so how many of you study the Word of God at least once a week? Okay. How many of you are part of discipleship class? Thank you. <laughs> All right. How many of you heard the Wednesday teaching? Okay. How many of you listened to it or watched it if you were not here? All right. Thank you. I, 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 I like those hands because I may not physically see you here, but knowing you are, amen. Thank God for the technology, right? Thank God for that. And, you know. When you love the word of God, when you truly love the word of God, you hunger for it. You want to know what's in there. You want to understand things like that, how to love God, how to be saved. You want to know that, how to make it to heaven, right? You, you want to know these things. And, and so you will have that drawing, amen? But not only that, when God reveals to you the word, what happens? You're going to want to apply it in your life. You're going to want to obey it. Because it's dangerous when you wait on it and, and you don't. You feel that conviction and you wait on it. It might go away. But when you respond to the Holy Ghost, because God is gentle. He's gentle. And he wants to reach out to the hungry, okay? And so, you know, I know some of you raised hands, some of you didn't, but, you know, I can't, I can't see your hearts. I can't read your hearts. But the choices and the actions you make do reveal what's in your heart, okay? The choices you make, the actions you do, reveal what's in your heart. Because love is a choice, right? And God chose to love us even while we were not even lovable yet. You know, this revelation is so powerful if you get this, the love of God, his love for you, if you can get the revelation that God loves you, 
personally, you, yourself, if you can grasp that, it's very, very powerful. It will set you free from a lot of things. Because when you truly believe that God loves you, anybody else's opinion about you won't really matter. Because his love is enough to fill what? That emptiness, that eternity in our soul that God put in there. Only his love can satisfy that. And my testimony is that I've tried many things. Thank God I didn't go into the drugs and the other stuff. But I looked for happiness. I couldn't find it until I experienced his love. And when I got it, I grabbed on and says, hey, this is it. And you know what? I'm not letting go. <laughs> I'm not letting go. And Romans 5, verse 8 says, But God commendeth his love towards us in that while what? We were yet sinners. He died for us. He died for us. The Amplified Version says, But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, or the Anointed One, died for us. Wow. Wow. I'm going to mention two significant qualities about God. First is, He is love. You believe that? I know 1 John 4, 8, and you don't have to bring it up, but 1 John 4, 8 and 16 says that God is love, for God is love love. That is who he is. He doesn't have love. He is love. That's in him. Amen. All right. And another quality of God is that he is infinite. Infinite. What is infinite? Being infinite is no limitations in time and space. He's a huge God. <laughs> right? It says the universe is in him. Amen. He's unmeasurable in quantity. Amen. So he's infinite. It's, it's different from eternal because eternal, um, right, um, has a beginning but no ending. But infinite, only God had no beginning. And he's the only infinite God. That's why it's called the term infinite because there, there's no such thing as two infinites <laughs> because one will, they'll be both finite, right? So we have one infinite God, amen? And I, I was just going to share you this, um, this story that, and when, when this story was told to me about the love of God for man, I was amazed. And um, I wanted to share with you how I heard the story. And it's, of course, it's scriptural. Amen. But before creation, the infinite God had a problem. The infinite God had a big problem. He did not have anyone to love. And so, he created man. But because man was finite, all right, the infinite God could not directly relate with man. Otherwise, man will die. Remember when Moses asked, God, can I see you? <laughs> and it was impossible. There's a great I am. Amen? The infinite God. He was not in the flesh yet. Okay? But I'm telling the story how even before creation, he longed. He longed to have fellowship with man because he was full of love. He had love in him. That was our God. He was a God of love. And he wanted to have someone who could love him back. Our God yearned for that. He wanted to have that fellowship because he was by himself, right? And the word of God will tell you during creation, right? He said, I was alone 
And then we would really know there was only one God, right? He said, I was alone because he was the infinite God alone. And he had nobody to love. Before creation, he had nobody to love. And so what did he do? He chose to become finite so that he can have the experience of being loved in return. He said, oh, in his mind, okay, remember the Logos. In his mind, he's thinking, the infinite God's thinking in his mind. I want to love man, amen, but I can't because I'm infinite. But what if I become man? Wow. <laughs> what if I become man? And that's the very first demonstration of his love towards us when he robed himself in flesh. Wow. And then not only did this great God humble himself in the finite form of man, but he basically chose to live so that he could die. Isn't that the story? He lived so that he could die. What a God. What a God. That was his sole mission. So that my sins can be set free. So that he can demonstrate his love for you. So that we can have him in our lives too. Wow. He didn't have to, but he did. Amen? You know, so if you ever wonder why God created you, if you ever wonder why, can I tell you, it's because he chose to love you. And I thank God for the privilege that I was born, born in this life, that I can experience this great, great thing with our God. Amen? That I have the privilege <laughs> Of being with him, and one day we will see him, amen. We will see him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your demonstration of love. Let's continue on. Mark 12 30. Mark 12 30. From the scripture we read earlier, it said, And Jesus answered him, The first of all. The commandments is here, O Israel. Okay, all right. Thank you. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So this first commandment means that we need to give our whole self to God. Do you think that's what it means? I believe it means giving every part and area of our life to him. Right? Is there any other part there that he, did, that he didn't mention there? I, th I think he's got it all, right? Wow. Wow. So this requires an intentional choice that we need to make Every day, as Brother Paul was talking about submission here, amen? It's an everyday thing. It's not a one-time thing and I'm good to go. No. It's an everyday choice because he expects that love back. If he gave his all, why wouldn't he, right? Why wouldn't he? And when we choose to love God, it is an exercise of our will. The strongest thing that we have, the strongest thing that's more powerful than God, do you know what it is? Your will. Your will. And so it touches him. And, and, and the angels rejoice when one repents 
when they make a decision to turn away from iniquity and to come to him. Because their will, they just gave their will to him. They gave the most powerful thing that he could not control. They give it to God. Joe, you're giving the most precious thing to God. What you're giving means a whole lot to him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's an exercise of our will, you know. In the same way as we will make it to heaven because we intentionally chose to obey the word of God. Right? It's not going to be a surprise, as your pastor would say. It's not going to be a surprise like, oh, wow, I made it to heaven. No. You will get there because you obeyed the word of God. And how many of you know the biblical way? I'm saying the biblical way because there's a thousand plans of salvation that this world can give, right? But do you all know the biblical plan of salvation? Amen. And our dear brother mentioned it earlier. Amen. We need to enter into the kingdom first. Amen. And we do that by water baptism and also receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. We need both. Amen. The covering of the blood and the power of the spirit. We need both to enter. Enter into the kingdom of God. And then after that, we keep growing. <laughs> we keep walking. Amen. I just wanted to say that because you don't say like, oh, praise God, I'm done. No. Nope. It's a growth thing. But I, can I tell you that there's so much more that you can expect from God. It's an exciting journey. It's an exciting journey in Jesus' name. And, you know, contrary to what a lot say, God did not intend for anyone to go to hell. He created it for the devil. But people will go to hell because of their choices. Their choices. They will hear the word. Maybe some of you have shared the word. They will hear it from somebody. Because the word says they will all have heard it. Okay? They go to hell because of the cho their choices and their decision, the decision of their will. Powerful. It's their will. It's their will. God loves them, but he cannot violate their will. He's a loving God, but he can't go against himself. He's righteous. He's just. He's holy. He can't break the law. The righteousness. And so there it is. God does not choose them to do that. That's their choice. Amen. But and so we're, yeah, we will be praying. Amen. We will be praying for souls. That that is our job as a church. Amen. We're praying for the revelation of God, for the hunger of souls, so that they can receive that promise that God has for eternal salvation. Amen. So I have to choose to love God because if I don't purposely choose to know him, to love him, to obey him, then I am in effect choosing not to love him or to do those things. You might be saying, you know, sister, I don't really mean not to choose to love God. I don't really mean that. You're probably saying that, right? I don't really mean not to omit God in my life or not to make him so important. You know, I don't really not mean to do that. I, I, I know what you're trying to say, but what is happening is that, yeah, you're not purposely trying to omit God but you are choosing other things before God. Same thing, right? But almost looks like a subtle detour of the enemy, right? To make you think, oh, I'm not really, I'm not really um, avoiding God. 
you're not, but you're putting your attention on other idols, right? Same essence, right? Wow. Got to take note of the enemy's subtle lies. But we need to study the word of God so we know what is true, what is real, what he expects of us. Amen? All right. Wow. You know, one day the Lord had a conversation with a rich ruler, didn't give the name, um, and he called him good master. And he asked the Lord, what, sh what should I do so that I can inherit eternal life? And so he, um, the Lord mentioned, okay, you know the Ten Commandments. He said, oh, yeah, I, 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 I've done that since I was a kid. And you know what the Lord said? But you lack one thing. You lack one thing. And, um, sister, that is, I believe, Luke 18, 22. And in my mind, I thought, man, this should be easy for him, right? If he, if he obeyed all, right, the commandments, he just needs to obey one more command. That should be easy, right? Right? That should be easy. Is there an 11th commandment? You know? Okay. Like, he's got it. The ruler's got it. You could do this, right? And now Jesus heard these things. He said to them, yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And you know what happened, right? He couldn't give it up. You see, he loved God. He followed all his commandments, but there was one thing that he put before God. He was a very wealthy man, but was not willing to give up his riches. Hey, it's, it's not a sin to be rich. No, it's not. Okay? It's not a sin to be rich. But it is a sin to love your money. Right? Or put it before God. Okay? All right. Ooh, Lord, your sword is sharp today, right? <laughs> Jesus' name. You know, usually after the message, there's altar call, okay? Our, we have to surrender that to God. If you have any God's convicted, you give it to God. You surrender your will to God, and he will give you the power to do his will. And you'll feel so much better, I promise you. Jesus' name. You know, we may not think that we love our money, but are we putting our work or career before God? Or is it easy for us to skip church or a Bible study because we need the money more than we need God? Think about that. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 2 tells us to set your affection, your love, amen, your attention on what? Things above, on the supernatural things of God, not on things on the earth, the temporal things, the things that are going to vanish, amen. <laughs> he wants us to focus on what will last forever. What about our soul? Amen. The destiny of our soul. What about that? That's where the word of God is telling us to focus on. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Here's another good one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We love the people of the world, okay? We love them. Their souls, we love them, okay? We don't love the sin they do, okay? But we don't love the systems of the world. It may look so pretty and beautiful. And you may want it. 
but it's not the will of God for us to focus on that. Remember that emptiness I talked about earlier? If you feel that, you're, you're, that emptiness with the things of this world, it's not going to work. You're only going to be tied to it and empty and wondering what happened. Amen? Many of you know what I'm talking about. God has dealt with you, and when you let go, you knew, right? <laughs> you knew, I, I don't want anything less than you, God. It's not worth it. It's not going to satisfy. It's not going to satisfy. Amen? Did, did we finish those verses? Sorry. Okay. All right. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passeth away. See, it's all temporal. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. It's all over the word of God, huh? <laughs> it's all over the word of God. All right. What about our relationships? Do we think it's okay with God when we put our relationships before him? You know, I remember when I was a new convert and... I got converted in the Lord. I was probably four years younger than you, brother, <laughs> a young adult then. And when I got the revelation of the baptism in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost, it, wow, just changed my life. I fell in love with God. I fell so in love with God. And at that time, I was engaged to be married. I was engaged, and I cared a whole lot about the guy. We were going to get married. But he, he didn't believe in what I believed in. And trust me, I, I tried my best to convince him until I knew he was settled on his beliefs. And I had to make a choice. I love the Lord so much. That even, even though I knew it was going to hurt me, even though I knew it was going to have many crying nights or days, I chose God. Nobody had to convince me. I just felt it in my spirit. We've got to be careful on what we allow in our lives, the influences that we are allowing in our lives, if they're hindering us in our walk with God, you've got to make a choice. Who are you going to please, them or God? I made a choice. Boy, I cried. I cried so hard. God healed. God heals, amen? When you give it to God, when you do it his way, he heals. He heals. And, you know, we go through many tests. And so I just want to leave that seed upon you to, you know, check yourself. Any relationships that you feel are a hindrance in your walk with God. And usually those that come for counseling are asked, well, pastor, how do I know if this is the one for me to marry? You know what we always say? If your relationship draws you closer to God, sounds like it's a good one, right? But if it's the opposite? You know what to do. And God will give you the grace to do it. Remember what I said earlier. God is gentle. You'll feel that gentle nudge. Conviction. But if you don't obey any sooner, it will leave. Because God doesn't force us. Amen. Our will is powerful. 
He doesn't force us. So let's be sensitive, amen, to God's conviction, to God's leading. Because that's actually the conscience. The conviction is our conscience, wherein God is with that. Him talking to us through our conscience, okay? But when we sear that conscience, we ignore it, we stop to listen, we won't be able to hear it anymore. Okay, so we got to be careful. Listen, listen, obey. But at the same time, hey, we've got altars here, okay? God can restore it if you lost, if you lost some things, amen. God can heal in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So let's see what the Word of God says about relationships, all right? Matthew 10, 37 through 39. I know this is a loaded one too. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. It. Wow, God's ways are so different, huh? <laughs> but it's all about giving it all to Him so that He can do it all. Amen. I don't know about you, He's never failed me yet. Amen. Applying His ways, applying it His ways. And, you know, as I said earlier, you know, if there's any relationship that is hindering you in your walk with God, then you need to make a choice. Amen? In Jesus' name. So when God says in his word to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, he really meant that, right? You read it in the word of God, and there's more scriptures, but don't worry. I'll, we'll have... Um, more gentle verses after that, amen? <laughs> but I wanted to say, I, I'm kind of feeling you out, and maybe some of you are saying, sister, wow, that's awesome, you know, but that's so hard to do. Have you ever thought that way? Have you ever entertained the lie of the devil that says, no, thank you, I can't do that? Okay? Okay. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar because it's not difficult to follow the will of God. He makes us think that it is, but it is not. Amen? And I'll show you, I'll prove you how it's not difficult to give your whole self to God. Amen? Why, why we can do this in Jesus' name. Amen? You know, because it only becomes hard to do or difficult with two conditions. Number one, if you're serving God halfway. If you're not giving your whole self to God, oh, yeah. It's a difficult journey, right? You're serving God halfway, right? That won't work. That would be difficult. That would be very difficult. Amen? Or number two, if you're doing it by your own strength, that's also difficult. Okay, let me, let me cover the first scenario. The first one is it's like a tug of war. Okay? You want to put one foot in with God and the other with the world. Why? Because they think they're missing out on something, brother. They think they're going to miss out from the things of the world. So they still put one foot in the world. They don't give their whole self to God. I want us to, to read that, sister, the Galatians 5, 17. And, and the apostle Paul was really good in trying to teach us the flesh and the spirit never go together. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that she would. 
It's difficult to live that life. It's difficult. It's not the will of God, and it's difficult. But can I tell you, there are great promises, great benefits, greater joy when you let go and you go all the way in. Amen? <laughs> when you go all the way in to get all of what God has for you. Amen? It's worth it. It's worth it. And it reminds me of, of that verse, Psalm 1611, right? Psalm 1611, he promises that when you choose that pathway, that path of life, that in thy presence is what? Fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And Brother Paul talked about having a life of prayer. You get that when you spend time with the Lord in his presence. You get that. That's the pres the pre being in his presence when you pray, amen, when you feel his presence, amen, when you worship him and you feel that in your spirit, you feel his love, amen. And then when you do the will of God, those you will see what the pleasures. The pl wow. Wow, he's not even done with the joy. There's even pleasures. Can I tell you, you cannot compare that with the things of this world. I mean, am I telling you the truth? Am I the only one experiencing the peace and the joy of the Lord every day? <laughs> this peace and this joy in the Holy Ghost is real. And the Word of God shows you how you can have it every day, every day. It's in the Word of God. Romans 14, 17. I love this verse, and I say it a lot here. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, not in the natural things, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Sister, do you have peace and joy every day? Yes, for the most part. Ask my children. Have you seen me depressed? Dana's not nodding or, or shaking her head, but he agrees, right? All right, okay. For the most part, yes, okay. It's not always automatic when I wake up, but usually it comes after I pray. <laughs> after I pray, amen? <laughs> and because joy, one more time, joy is not an emotion. It is a mindset. It's a mindset, and the feelings follow because of the correct mindset. Amen? All right. It's how you think. Amen? And then the beautiful emotions follow. The joy follows. The peace follows. Amen? So if so it says righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, right? So righteousness. If you believe that after, amen, after you get, you, after you get baptized, Brother Joe, Hi, I called him Brother Joe. <laughs> you now have that covering of his righteousness over you. That's what it is. That means, doesn't mean, that means, doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, okay? All right? Because who's perfect here? Nobody, right? But that means every time you make a mistake, all you need to do is say, sorry, God, forgive me. And he's faithful to cleanse you. And once again, that covering comes over you. And that's any time. And he's what? He's a quick forgiver, right? Any time. We just have to. But when we have, amen, the revelation in our mind that we always have the precious blood of Jesus to cover us, wow, that gives us so much, amen, peace knowing we have that. There's no condemnation. There's no shame, amen? Amen. <laughs> There's no depression, amen. We know we have that covering over us, that righteousness. We believe in the blood. We believe we have it. We believe we know it's available all the time, all the time. We just need to pray it, amen. We just pray it, amen. And if you believe that after you cast your cares to the Lord, that after you let it go and that you leave it in your hands and you trust that he will do his will, which his way his way, his timing, his manner, then you 
can have the mindset of peace. Then the feelings follow. And the joy is the mindset of the hope for tomorrow. If you trust that your God is faithful, you will know tomorrow it's going to be okay too. You have mindset, mindset. You trust in him. You trust in his love. Okay, remember I told you if you get a revelation of his love, you trust in his love for you personally. Personally, because he loves each and every one of us. Amen? In Jesus' name. It's all in the mindset. And so it's powerful. If we, if we focus on that, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Now, I didn't finish the other thought I had there. The second condition that makes us think it's hard to do the will of God is when you are relying on your own strength. And I, don't worry, I'm almost done here. And I just want to share this with you for those that might have a hard time. Um, Philippians 2.13 talks about grace. This is the best definition of grace, the empowerment of God. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Anytime you have a hard time, you say, God, not my will, your will be done. I surrender this to you. You lead me. You do the work in my life. Amen. It's not hard. It's not hard because he does the work. You got to get this, the grace of God. These are, these are foundational concepts in the word of God, okay, that we got to get peace of God, how to get the peace of God, grace of God, how to receive the revelation of the love. These are all foundational. This will keep us going. This will keep us healthy in our walk with God, amen. So we need to have that revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of God. It's always, always available. Now, I have one last verse. And here's the bottom line of knowing if you really love the Lord. The bottom line. Okay. This is actually God's final standard to determine if we will be saved at the time of judgment. Okay. This is Matthew 7, 21, 23. It says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How many of you have noticed these verses before reading the word of God? That's pretty strong. And I know we talk about it a lot, but for those of you who may not be familiar, what does the word iniquity mean? Right? Doing, running our own life, okay? Not seeking God's will. And I know we, we, the common Christian believes, oh, I just have to, like the rich ruler, do the Ten Commandments. And I'm good, you know. But have, has he sought the will of God? Amen. And the question is, are we seeking the will of God in our lives? Because I tell you, they were doing good works. They were doing good works. And for me, that was a big revelation. Wow. People doing good works can go to hell. I was shocked. I was shocked. Because it's not about our works. It's not about our works. It's about doing his will. Because, Brother Paul, they didn't have time to pray. They were caught up doing their own thing. There were good works, but they didn't have time to listen to God. They didn't have time to hear what God wanted them to do. They were wrapped up in their own life, being, being fulfilled, doing their own thing. So God 
didn't know them. God didn't know them. I don't know about you, but I want him to know me. I want the Lord to know me. And if the musicians can come. I want to be free from iniquity. Love is a choice. Are you going to choose to love him, to follow his will, to make decisions to put him first, to make decisions to remove any hindrance in your life that is pulling you away from God? Are you going to make that choice to say, God, I love you. I want to love you. I want you to know that I love you. Are, are you willing to make that choice? Let's Let's please stand. Let's spend a little time in prayer, and then we will have our baptism afterwards. But let the Lord deal with hearts today, amen. And a simple prayer is just, God, I surrender my will to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, for failing failing to to surrender my will to you, running my own life, Lord, for thinking I'm doing the right thing when I failed to seek your will. I, I'm sorry, Lord. God, cleanse me, Lord, from iniquity. Forgive me. Forgive me for the sins of iniquity, Lord. I want to go in your path of life, Lord, your promise of righteousness, peace, and joy. I want to stay in that pathway, Lord. I want to experience that. I want to do your will. I want to please you. I want you to know me, Father. I want you to know me, oh God. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, and give me your grace, Father. I pray, Lord, your grace upon your body today, Lord. Your grace, the power to do the right thing, the power, oh God, to follow your will, the power, he will give it to you. This is not difficult. He will give it to you. It is his will. It is his will. It is yours because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. It is for you today. It is for you today. Let's... Let's keep praying. Let's yield our spirit to him. Let him cleanse you. Let him heal you. Let him let, feel his love. Feel his love. It is with you today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can we all just make our way to the altar? Can we all just make our way to the front in Jesus' name? We all have something that we hold on to. We all have something. If you want to get closer to God and you want that fire to keep going within you, Something needs to be put on the altar to burn. Something needs to be put on the altar to burn. And this day, do I choose to put my will, my flesh to burn. To allow His will, His will to be done in the name of Jesus. For all of those of you who are here in the front... Why don't you just make that commitment right now? God, whatever I need to let go, whatever I need to put on this altar, whatever needs to die within me, O oh Lord, that I need to let go of, it may not necessarily be some sin, but some weights, some things that are in your life that are hindering the work of God, that are hindering your growth. Some of us need to let go of a couple of things for Him to be made manifest. 
Some of us need to make a bit more time for Him. Some of us need to put our cell phones down. Some of us need to clock out a little earlier. Some of us need to let go some things. God is challenging you. He is challenging you. He wants to love you. He wants to show you His love. I know we may be tired this morning, but this is the point where you push in the flesh. That God, I desire you more than anything. I desire you more than my sleep. I desire you than more than my physical rest. I desire you, God. Come on, push in the Spirit. Prevail in the Spirit, God. I just want to just hang on to your cloak. I just need a touch from you, God. Father, I cannot stay silent. I cannot stay silent. Not just for the things that you bless me with, God, but the things that you are doing now in my life. Will I praise you? The things that you are capable of love. Will I praise you, Father? Come on, push in the Spirit right now. Come on, push in the Spirit right now in Jesus' name. There is a greater commitment God is calling us to. There is a greater commitment. There is a greater commitment. He will provide the grace. He will provide the strength. You just got to give up a couple things. And He will fill it with His strength. He will fill it with His grace. In Jesus' name. There you go. There you go. There you go in the name of Jesus. There you go in Jesus' name. Ashika Yonobosa. Ilonobosaye. Come on, just begin to worship Him. Just begin to worship Him from your heart. The innermost being in Jesus' name. Idaria da Rabakaye, Idaramba Cario no Lobosa, Ilomo Soto. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Kuba Idaba Robo. If you're praying, keep on praying. But I feel so strongly the Lord is wanting to do something right now. If you're in the front, stay in the front. The Lord is wanting to do something according to your hunger. According to your desire for Him. And I believe we've we've just stepped into an atmosphere of the Spirit that's so powerful those of you that are the deacons in this church, the Holy Ghost wants you to get ready to minister to people that are in this place. There's a spirit of ministry here. 
my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost so strongly right now. If you need healing in your body, if you need healing in your mind, if you need healing in your emotions, or if you just need a touch from God, can you just lift up both of your hands in faith? Because the Lord right now, He's going to fulfill it. There's a wind of the Holy Ghost that's sweeping right now that's just going to fan the flame of the Holy Ghost fire that's about to be released right now. As you're lifting up your hands, let that be the sign that you have to God. Lord, I'm ready to receive whatever you want to do. I feel those angels just moving in right now in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, as your hands are raised, why don't you just begin to engage in the spirit right now? Why don't you just begin to lift up your voice? Why don't you just begin to speak with other tongues? If you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, God wants to fill you with His Spirit. My God, there is anointing in this place. I wonder if you would just let the Spirit of God flow in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in this place, let it be removed right now by the authority of the Word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity, every sickness in your body, I release the will of God upon your body, upon your blood, upon your mind, upon your heart, upon your spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. If you have the Holy Ghost, allow Him to use you to minister to someone. If you have the Holy Ghost, allow Him to use you to lay hands on someone right now. Come on, He's in the room right now. He's in the room right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's see. Let's not stop that. Let's not stop it. Let's not stop it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you want your healing, just begin to press a little bit deeper. If you desire that touch, press a little bit deeper. Come on, someone touch the hem of his garment right now. Touch the hem of his garment. He called Come on, that's it. Touch the hem. Touch the hem and let the virtue flow. Touch the hem and let the virtue flow. Come on, there's virtue in this place that God wants to flow, but you need to touch the hem first. He Come on, I believe God wants us to go deeper. Between you and your hunger, why don't you just begin to pray a little bit deeper? Between you and your hunger. God, I'm not satisfied with just the usual in the name of Jesus. I know there's more in store, God. I know there's more in store. Come on, somebody break something in the spirit right now. Allow the Holy Ghost to break something through you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. God's using you right now. That's it in the name of Jesus. That's it in the name of Jesus.
That's it, that's it, that's it. Hakatala Bosaya, Hakatala Bosaya, Hikatala Borokosa, Akandele Bosa. My God. Come on, that's it. Let it flow. Let it flow. The Holy Ghost is wanting to flow. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to stop it. Come on, that's it. Somebody's tapping in, into a deeper vein right now. Someone's tapping into a deeper vein. Why don't we join our sister right now? Tap into that depth. Tap into that depth. Eketele borokosa, andele borokotaya. Come on, that's it. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Katala Boroko se Katala Mahaya Irobo Sandele Mahataye I feel this in the Holy Ghost. If you struggle with the Spirit, of fear or anxiety. No one's going to judge you for it. But if you just want to be delivered from that, can you just raise your hands? If you struggle with the spirit of anxiety and the spirit of fear, if you could just raise both of your hands. These past couple days, I I was expressing this to one of my close friends. I said to them, I do not struggle with anxiety at all. The Lord knows that. It's not something I wrestle with. It's not something I've been bound by. I just, that's just how me and God are. But for the past couple days there's been this almost a spirit of anxiety that's just been trying to knock on my door and and some of you have been experiencing that that anxiety is triggered by certain thoughts certain uncertainties I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to tell someone right now if you're so scared and fearful and uneasy about what's going to happen in the future, you will never be able to have joy in what God's doing right now. You'll never be able to have peace in right now. So the questions and the comments and the concerns that you have, if you would just let that go and just trust God knows it, His plan is perfect. His will is perfect. I'll just let the author keep on writing because he always writes the best story. I feel the love of God so strongly right now. Some of you have been struggling with a spirit of anxiety for weeks, but some of you it's been years 
It's been years since you've truly felt what the Bible calls great peace. Fear hath torment. It's not the will of God for you to fear. It's not the will of God for you to be uneasy. Because anxiety is a root or a sem- or the root of anxiety. Anxiety is just the, sis- the symptom of not trusting God on a specific thing. And so if you want peace, and if you want the anxiety to leave, the Lord will give it to you this morning. If you would just lift up your hands, God's saying right now, I'll give it to you. But when I give it to you, you cannot try to figure out what I'm not allowing you to see yet. Because if I give you all the answers, you can't walk by faith. You can only walk by faith if you can't see it yet because that's what engages the faith. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you, if you need that peace, Lord, because you love your people and by that reason only, it is because of your love. I release your peace upon every person that has their hands lifted. Peace in their storm. God does not have to remove your storm in order for you to receive peace. He can give you peace in the midst of the storm. You've been asking God to remove the storm so you can have peace. God wants to give you peace in the storm because if you can have peace in the storm, that's you that's how you know it's truly his peace and it's not just yours. It's the peace of God. It passes understanding. It passes all knowledge. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive that peace right now. Come on, no worry. No fear. The Lord's got you in the palm of his hands. He upholdeth the righteous. He upholdeth them that even when they do fall, he will pick them back up. Hallelujah. Why don't we just begin to worship him right now? Why don't we just begin to thank him? Everything that he's done, everything that he's imparted.